Welcome to That Entrepreneur Life, a podcast about entrepreneurship that takes you from idea to launch and beyond. Beyond. Each week, your hosts, Andrew Lees and Clint McPherson, discuss different business topics aimed at adding value to any entrepreneur's journey. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. It is 2021, and we're super excited to get this thing kicked off. What's up, Clint? How's it going, man? Not much, man. What's going on? Just living the entrepreneurial life like always, but man, like it's it's just one of those things I'm excited about. Really kicking off 2021 the right way, getting on recording another podcast. Let's go ahead and kick this thing off by welcoming our special guest, Ruben Alvarez, to the show. How you doing, man? Dude, I'm doing fantastic, man. Like I, I got a, like the ability to talk with you guys a little bit. I love the dynamic that you guys have and what this show's all about. So I'm I'm like pumped to be here. Thanks, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're we're very excited to have you on the show. Um, before we get into everything, we got a few questions for you. But before we get into that, can you just tell us kind of what you're all about? You know who you are, what you're all about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the short answer is basically I'm trying to reach financial finance. Yeah, financial independence at some point, right? So um, I have my own business. I am a digital marketer. Um, I have a podcast, which I use for additional exposure. Um, I have a YouTube channel that just got monetized in which I reach a different audience, which is consumer electronics. Um, and then I have a, a Facebook group, which is called Brand Masters, in which we actually do digital courses for people. That's a very, very low intro because we want to be able to help people. Yeah, man, I, I'm I'm really I'm really doing the research heading into this podcast episode, man. I was really excited to have you on, right? Um, had somebody reach out to us and ask if you could be on the show, and 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 we do our research before we say yes. And man, when I whenever I started digging into it, I was really excited because again, I'm a digital marketer by trade, and I and I, man, like I said off record, man, I don't like I don't look at at another digital marketer as you know competition to a degree. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel that we all have our power, you know, our, our one specific thing that we're all strong at. We surround ourselves with teams that help us elevate that strength um, and help us focus on what we're good at. And again, man, I get excited when I could talk digital marketing with somebody that actually knows it, man. So, so as a business visionary, man, and one of the go-to experts for creating a brand right now out there, um, Take us back to when your entrepreneurial journey started and what it is about entrepreneurship that led you to where you are today. So actually entrepreneurship uh, became a real thing to me when I got kicked in the teeth by the corporate world and the small business world. Right. Um, I thought I, you were going to say like, literally for a second there. <laughs> dude, um, just, just almost, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was in a small business and I was taking like a lot of heat from a, um, uh, you know, I'm, He's very old school. He was a Persian guy, but he had very, very old school values. He's only like 42, 45, I think too, which like just makes you really like think like he's not even that old, you know what I mean? But just very old school, very traditional, um, verbally abusive, like type of like, oh, you know, you did bad. Let me like just down talk you for 40 minutes. And um, so I, I put up with it. I was the only person that could put up with it. I started there when I was like 20 goal of like, you know, partnering one day. I, I became the sales manager. I was making very, very good money for my age. And last, no, not even last year. I can't say that because it's 2021, but 2019 in April sold the company says, Hey man, thank you for everything you've done. Five grand bonus, or actually might've been a little bit more, but he basically gave me a bonus. I was just like, whatever, you know? Um, and then the new uh, company comes in and they're like, you know, from Europe and they're a billion dollar company. And I just start telling people like, what, what what's going to happen to me now? Right. Like what's going on? No, nothing's happening. It's the same show. Nothing happening. No panic. No nothing. Right. I'm like, dude, I'm a sales manager and you have another sales manager and he's older. Like, come on. Like, yeah, you can you know? kind of put put it to, you know, kind yeah, of put the pieces yes. together there. Yeah. So like those two, three months, I was just like, dude, what the hell am I going to do? And, um, you know, when I was younger, I like, I, I have the, a similar story to a lot of people. Like I sold candy during middle school and stuff like that. And, you know, and I got caught people slapped my hand. They're like, don't do that. You're going to get, you know, uh, thrown out of school. So in that two, two to three month time period, I was uh, flipping furniture. I was flipping shoes. I love flipping the shoes, but it just wasn't giving me enough. I was flipping furniture. It was giving me enough, but I freaking hated doing it. So then uh, I forgot I was flipping electronics on like eBay and stuff like that, but then they were taking a cut, just hated it. You know what I mean? Um, went to a conference. My, I got a coach for like one or two months. Dude said like, Hey, just get a tax write-off and start a business, start writing stuff off. 
Um, my, my wife's a graphic designer by trade. I was doing sales and marketing for this company. We ended up making the company and we ended up doing really well. And we actually just turned it into a whole business. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a great story. It sounds like a good team you've got there with your wife. She can kind of do some more of the creative, um, art type stuff and, and you can, you know, both you can deal with the, well, you're still dealing with creative things on the marketing side, but still you're more in the digital marketing and, and how to actually build a brand. But man, those are, those are two super complementary skill sets. So that's really cool. Yeah. It's weird when you see kind of like the synergy and she, she was against it for the longest time. Right. But the, the, cause I was trying to start a business for her and I never thought like, oh, we could do the business together, you know, cause we were actually working together in that same company, but then she got tired of working for that guy. And then she went with him to the new company that he started. And then eventually I was like, dude, well, if your only option at this point is if you want to keep making the same, it's like, we're going to start a business. And then finally, once we did it, it like, it was such a good thing that like, we're making very, very good money on it. Um, and she was able to leave her job within three months after we started the business, which was amazing. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So what did, did you, um, you know, what did you learn from that, from your experience working for that, working in sales, working for that guy and, you know, both you and your wife that I, that kind of sounds like you were able to turn, go from, you know, zero to a really good sustainable business pretty quickly. And within a few months, how, what do you think the key was to that? So the, the primary people that we work with right now, like my ideal client, which I don't have enough of, but that like I'm working my way towards is manufacturers because we were a manufacturer, right? And I just understand the processes. I understand how they're actually supposed to market, whether they market directly to the customer or they go through distribution as well. You know, like I just understand that process so well that it makes sense for me to be marketing for those people. Um, but we're marketing for them. We're marketing for actual business to business. And then we're marketing for coaches just because I'm very like on the motivational, influential, like get stuff done. So I feel like I can make content for them just way too easy. Um, but what it actually showed me is that because I was in manufacturing, all of our uh, relationships were distribution only. So that means that like, there's only so many distributors in a specific market. And before you actually just have to keep talking to the same people and hoping they buy more of your stuff, you know? So my business took off due to the fact that I am very, very relationship based. So if you go out and tell me, hey, knock on a hundred doors, I'm like, dude, I, that sucks. I don't want to do that. Like, just give me three top people and I'll close two of them. I promise, you know? Um, so that that's my success. It takes us longer to acquire a client, but it takes us also longer to lose a client. So I've been, I've been kind of like, before COVID, it was going like this. And then after COVID, it was just kind of going like this. And we had a few like this, but then we just kind of like evened out, which has been really cool. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just staying, staying afloat during this, during 2020, I think was, you know, was super impressive. That, that's really cool. Well, we'll have to talk offline too, because I do uh, product development, uh, design and engineering for, for people. So I'm dealing with manufacturers all over the world all, all the time. And, uh, it's really good. You know, you never know when I'm always looking for new manufacturers in different areas. So, um, and just to make connections. So yeah. Uh, definitely. So, um, Ruben, what came first, your marketing consulting business, or you also have a, a personal in for the kill brand? Um, what came first and, and what kind of synergy have you seen between the two ventures? So what's funny is I didn't, I haven't even really launched the consulting thing. Um, we kind of put it out there mid November and we didn't really have anybody bite on like a course that was going to be like a mix of like group coaching and consulting. And then within the last three weeks, I've had three people um, reach out to me and be like, I can you like, can you do coaching? And I'm like, I don't do coaching. I do consulting. You know what I mean? It's very specific. To the, um, but it's cool because it's like, I put it out in the universe and it's coming back. So the, uh, what we were doing originally was just marketing and where we're going is we're going into branding a lot more now. So like the last six months have just been on us focusing on like brand specific things, because since she's a graphic designer, um, we focus on getting people like notice to go get speaking gigs and stuff like that. Whereas on the manufacturing side, which we don't, once we get more manufacturers, it might change. Um, we I can actually get them sales. You know what I mean? So it's been just kind of like a mix of both. Um, what ended up coming first though, was the marketing, um, which was strict marketing and ads and all that stuff. Um, we wanted a good name. 
more than anything when we started is all we wanted was a good name and we're like if we get a good name people will understand what we do so we were going back on like the social media hunters and the social media experts and all this stuff right and we finally ended up on marketing hunters and i was always like a big advocate of like if you can get a good hashtag that relates to your business people will like that hashtag and you know like use it for their business they'll put it on clothes and stuff so we came up with like a few and then when i heard them uh in for the kill I was like, dude, that's way too good for a marketing company. That's like, that's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? That's a, like a mindset type of thing. So we actually, I ended up splitting them. Um, and basically the in for the kill is owned by the marketing hunters as a trademark, but it does okay. not, it's not part of it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And it, it does, it's got a, your um, in for the kill website has a very different look and feel to your consulting business and more, more oriented on your podcast than on your, uh, you know, on your swag and merchandise. And so that makes a lot of sense, but, but that's cool. I mean, you, you can use that branding to help your marketing agency and then the experience you get from, uh, from your brand, you know, you can use that to say, Hey, I, I use this over here for myself on my brand, let, and it worked. Let's, let's use it over here in my consulting business. That's yeah. I love, I love that. Yeah, man. And Ruben to go along with that, man, I know your main message is the sales will bring you money, right? But brand will build, bring you legacy. And I saw that on your website and how important is it to create a brand that allows you to win and establish freedom, man? I think, I think that's pretty much everything, right? Like uh, the, the thing that I've seen with a lot of like marketing is that if you have to keep getting the dollar that you have today, every single day, you're pretty much, you have like a sales cycle, right? And the moment that the sales cycle is broken or doesn't work anymore, then you're pretty much that that's it. So there's so much like money and energy that has to go into that. Whereas instead, if you're doing everything today, so that that way a year or two or five years from now, a customer's ready to buy, then you're setting yourself up so that that way, while you have that sales cycle, you also have additional stuff coming in so that if your sales cycle is broken, you can still have additional income coming in. So that's where your real like safety net is. If you're investing in your brand, I do a lot of um, ads for myself that are purely for brand awareness and impressions. So that that way more people actually just start seeing my name and they're like, who the hell is this guy versus what ROI is it giving me daily? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Kind of you're playing the long game on that. And, and I like what you said about putting in the work now that you're going to, you know, that you're going to get the benefit from later, usually with that kind of thing, you know, I mean, I, I, with consulting, you are, you're always putting in time to get money and that, that cycle can break if it, you know, this, the second that, um, you know, that you don't have any more customers, you know, I mean, you could have customers coming to you for a while and then all of a sudden, you know, it starts to, um, starts to kind of die down. It's easy to lose momentum with that kind of thing. Whereas like, let's say you had an info product that you could, you know, you could really help, help more people more efficiently and have a, a sales cycle that, you know, you might not even need to be hundred percent involved in that might be more powerful long-term, but it's going to, it's takes longer for that kind of thing to get going. Whereas consulting, you can get right, you know, get a one client that could be good for a month and that's, and you're good. And it, you know, it happens quickly. And, but so, so I think maybe there's, if you're going to start a business, especially people who are, are interested, you know, they have a certain skill set and they want to launch an info product. I feel like maybe, I mean, let me know what you think about this, but I feel like if you have both a consulting and an info product, then you're covered on both on all fronts. You've got revenue coming in now and you've got, you know, you're, you're working on this thing that is going to really build on itself, um, kind of snowball into the future. But, to, but to even add to that though, I mean, Ruben, what, what you have going on, man, and how you you visualize it is, is genius because you're not looking just so short term, right? The long games in play. And as entrepreneurs, if we're just so short sighted and just after the money or after this one client or after this, and just, focusing on this one time transaction instead of looking at the long game and having so many different, you know, thing, you know, 
different pieces of wood in the fire, man, and you're spreading yourself out. So if one does burn out, you have this one just being thrown in and you're ready to roll. Right. And so yeah. I love that, man. Love it. Yeah. So I, I, um, I realized when COVID hit, when we were all stuck at, or at least when we thought we were going to be stuck at home, like that original, like March, April period, you know, when everybody's like, Oh my God, we can't leave. And they're going to like, the cops are going to stop us for warrant, like for permits, you know? Um, I was like, okay, so like what business is viable where I can't leave my house and people are just on the internet. Right. So my YouTube channel flipped from um, ed- from education and I was doing like a lot of videos and I couldn't go out and meet people face to face to do podcasts anymore. And I was like, what would people view as entertainment? And what are they watching that I can make money on so that if this does happen again and I can only make money off the internet, what could I do? And my biggest problem, which, you know, Ty Lopez, I don't know whether you love him or you hate him, but basically I, we were listening to him the other day and he was saying like, he has a problem with clubs, right? So what he did is he bought the club and he just keeps going to the same club. So basically he's like, oh, money in this pocket, puts it in this pocket, right? So my biggest thing is I have a problem with electronics. I love electronics. I love the new iPhone. I love the PS5. I love all this stuff, right? My YouTube is primarily based on reviewing electronics. So everything that I buy, I write off and I make money on top of the ad revenue and whenever people send me free products. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I love that. Is there a- yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else or if there was a question that I didn't answer. No, man. No, no, it's cool. No, from, from, my we- end, from my end, you're good, man. I think uh, it's, it's on to Andrew, my man. Yeah, awesome. So uh, through your entrepreneurial journey, Ruben, from the highs to the lows, what has been the most difficult thing about it? about being an entrepreneur and how do you kind of get unstuck and not lose traction? I mean, the hardest thing is when you're not meeting enough people. I think that that's where you really start to worry. I I don't know if I'm a little bit different, but like we, we had solid stable clients, but my thing was always that I was like bringing on an additional person. Right. And then I would always be thinking like, okay, what if this client leaves? Like, where does that leave me? So then I'd be thinking like, why am I not meeting enough people? Right. And again, I'm not the type of person that's going to cold call a business just because I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. That's going to take seven times. I might as well just try to find a better, a better connection that I can like, you know, close today or something like that. So you're stuck in that mindset of always wondering like, why am I not meeting enough people? You have enough fear that's going on in your mind. And, um, you know, we were all talking about clubhouse right before this happened, but clubhouse is a, is a great thing. And I don't know if it'll be relevant when this airs or not, but the thing is that it's relevant to what we're speaking of, of like, how do you get rid of those fears of those lows? Um, if you're afraid that you're not meeting enough people, you have to actively be looking as to how you're going to meet more people. And for me, it took, I don't know, six months since the, like I was been at this since June, July of asking like, what, how do I meet more people? So I was bringing more people on my podcast. I was putting out podcasts more often. I was trying to network with other people. I was joining groups, you know, all this different stuff. And then finally this thing called Clubhouse and it may be Clubhouse today or maybe something different in the future, but it allows you to network with so many people and throw your ideas into place to where I've met minimum five to new 10 new people a day that I've actually been able to interact with. So the going through the lows you have to actively search what's going to fix that problem. So if you're, if you don't have enough customers, don't focus on how am I going to get a hundred new customers? Focus on how am I going to get one customer? If I can only get one customer today, how can I get that one customer? Oh, uh, you know what? I need to hire someone. I don't need to hire someone. Okay. Drop everything else on someone else. If you can focus on hiring that one person and that's, what's going to get you out of your lows. Yeah, exactly. And if you can do that consistently too, you know, instead of trying, instead of worrying about getting a hundred, I I mean, I definitely do this. I feel like a a lot of entrepreneurs do this where it's like, you know, there's so many things we want to do. There's, there's, we have very high expectations and we're thinking far, we're thinking far ahead, right? That's just kind of like, we have to, because it's all on us, you know, um, which is great. But sometimes, like I know for myself, I think a little too far ahead, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a few too many moves ahead where I'm just thinking like, I, yeah, I want to get a hundred clients and I know I can do it, but I kind of get overwhelmed. And then instead of in, in maybe I'll, you know, really 
um, hustle hard for a week and try and get as much of that as I can, but then, I'll, but then it'll start, but then I can't sustain that, you know, and it's more important to just get one new customer a week or one new customer a month and do that over and over and over and over again and perfect that process. And then it'll start, you'll start to be able to scale it and it'll be less, less intimidating as you go forward. What's yeah, important. It, go ahead. It's, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Ruben. You're good. Uh, uh, yeah. I was going to just say that it, it's a, it's a really weird thing for entrepreneurs that we have to have so much faith in everything that we do. And like you said, there's so many different things that we want to do at once. And the more things that we take on at once, the more faith that is required, because now you have to have faith in this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. Right. And we almost don't even realize that we're like kind of screwing ourselves over because we're like, okay, I want to grow. Well, I need to hire someone new. And you're just like, now I not only need to worry about growing, but I need to worry about this person actually working out. And it's just so many different things. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like, as entrepreneurs, we just take on so much that like just has to be dealt with. Yeah. And as entrepreneurs, we have to know our limitations, right? That's what I was going to say. As far as we all have limitations, if you're a solopreneur, if you're an entrepreneur that has a team, whatever it is, is, and that's what I struggle with, right? I struggled with in my digital marketing agency when I started doing all the work, right? And I've quickly realized you can't scale that way, right? Like I was like, because you only as one person can take on so much. So if I had a goal to like, okay, well, I wanted to get one, like close one client a week, right? And that's 52 clients a year. I'm sitting here like, can I really take that on? Right? And am I being realistic about that as one person? Could I really take on 52 clients and offer SEO, website design, graphic design, this and that? And at the end of the day, you got to look at the hard facts and it's like, hell no, I yeah. can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and that's, oh no, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, man. Yeah. I was going to say that. So that's, that's the other thing about when you start, I feel like you have to do it all because you have to know sure, like what you can sure. actually do. But then as you, as you start coming, you're like, can I do SEO and website and all this stuff? And it's like, you have to really start just kind of scaling down and seeing like, what makes you the most money? Yes. Because if you're doing like email marketing and it's taking up like four hours, but if you can bang out a website in like four hours as well, you know, just realistically yeah. take, take the websites, you know what I mean? You're going to make five times more money, six times more money, whatever you charge but you're going to spend the same amount of time. So it's like you, ha right. a lot of people think like, Oh, well, what should I need a niche down? And it's like, just start, you'll find out what you're actually really good at. Who's going to pay you the most. And you're, you'll find out along the way. Oh, for sure. And I mean, you got to really look at the churn rate too, right? Like, am I going to do this? And is it going to like, like you just said, is it really going to bear the fruit that I need to really hold on to this client? How, like you really got to look at the lifetime value of a client and how, how much money that person is going to make make you not just make, but it's like, how much are they going to make you really as your client? Okay. Is it 10 K? Is it whatever? Once you start picturing that and writing it down or jotting that down and having these goals and what I, what the cool thing, what I did is I pivoted um, towards the end of this year. I kind of went, you know, uh, didn't take on any more clients. I kind of like took a step back and I really focused on building the team around me so I can have a fulfillment team. And that's what I was lacking initially. Like I had a small team and we could fulfill services, but it wasn't like a specific team dedicated to one specific thing. They were a team that were focused on a whole, a lot of things. And I started f finding out that like that right there was not bulletproof, man. Like we started dropping the ball here, dropping the ball there. And you're like, what the hell is going on? So when I took a step back, I was like, okay, you, we all have an expertise maybe in understanding this stuff, but are we actually de over delivering to our clients to where it's like, damn, dude, these, these, if it's SEO, if it's pay-per-click ads, if it's Google advertising, Instagram advertising, are we really helping them stand out? Are we just helping them get by? And once I started realizing like having a fulfillment team to focus on, if it's Instagram ads, that's all the hell they're focused on is Instagram ads. And that's all they can answer questions about, right? They might be knowledgeable and want to learn more about other stuff. But when, when I bring them in for a meeting, it's only one person I'm talking to instead of getting, you know, 35 different answers from one person about everything. And it's, it's a lot harder that way. And I just felt like that is, was the direction for my business. And I really see big things happen in 2021 and I'm excited about it, man. So, so Ruben, as we wrap up this episode, man, I, I mean, brother, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. Um, and, and just having you on has excited us. And just, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, man, to, to help them and keep them motivated or keep them moving along, man, what would it be? 
I, I would, I would leave them with that same bit of advice of like, think about like what you do today. Will it have an effect on you in 10 years from now, or even five years from now? Um, if you, if you even just meet one person today, could that person buy from you? Like, you know, a year from now, is it going to sustain your business? Cause if you're, if you're really only worried about the today, you'll never catch up to yourself in the future. So you have to always be doing something for yourself in the future and not just always worrying about yourself today. I love that. Yeah, that that's huge. Um, and I mean, it's investment. If you're going to invest in something, yeah. you know, invest in yourself and, uh, yeah, it's very cool. Well, guys, I thank think you. that's a wrap for this episode. And from the both of us, Ruben, we want to thank you for taking the time of your day, brother, and helping us add value to what we're doing on our podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Love, love talking with you guys. This was great. Yeah. Awesome to have you on the show, man. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening to That Entrepreneur Life. To learn more about what Ruben is working on, check out rubenalvarez.com. If you like what you heard today, make sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and any other major podcast directory. Um, and if you made it to the end of this episode, then that means that you're super interested in our content. And that's awesome. Um, we're also going to start doing a, a mini masterclass type thing. We might have guys like, and, and women, um, on our show, people like Ruben Alvarez, um, to, to talk to us, to walk us through some really specific tasks, um, about being an entrepreneur from, uh, market research and business development to marketing. So, um, please shoot us an email and let us know if that's something you're interested in. Um, and so for, you can also find us on all the socials and on our website at thatentrepreneurlife.com. With that said, man, we want, want to quickly give a special shout out to our family, friends, include all of our listeners, followers, and subscribers. Thanks for continuing to support what we do as entrepreneurs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Thanks for listening to That Entrepreneur Life podcast. Be sure to visit thatentrepreneurlife.com to join the conversation, access our show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode as we continue to add value. Until next time.